Well, hey guys. You know, I have a bit of a reputation online for being a fragrance fear monger. So I thought in today's video, I would dive into that a little bit more. I don't consider myself a fragrance fear monger. I mean, I'm always burning a candle in the background and atomizing fragrance. I use heavily scented shampoos to make my hair smell like a fruit bowl. I mean, those of you who watch my videos, you see a fair amount of fragrance usage on my part. I'm always spraying my countertops down with uh, glorified perfume. Looking at you, Mrs. Myers, you got me. Anyways, I understand though that not everybody watches every single video that I put out. And if you watch uh, my, you know, shop with me videos, I'm always pointing out fragrance and skincare products and kind of encouraging you guys to avoid it as best you're able. So I thought I would delve into that a little bit more today. A lot of proponents of fragrance in skincare products, they always say, state things like, well, fragrance has a lot of benefits. Like it's been shown to calm down anxiety, help with sleep. Fragrance also kind of boosts self-appeal, self-esteem. I mean, I agree. That's why I like, you know, when I have a fruity smelling scalp, I just feel like I'm ready. I, I totally relate to it. And it definitely is relaxing. I mean, that's why I'm always burning candles. I find them relaxing. There are many problems though, that arise as a result of fragrance in skincare products, and I will get into those in today's video. One of the most challenging aspects of fragrance for both consumers and dermatologists is that there are, fragrance is not just like one ingredient. You know, when you see fragrance as an ingredient, it's multiple ingredients. It's just a, an umbrella term or, or perfume just an umbrella term. There are 300, at least 300 fragrance ingredients. I can't name all of them, but we do know which ones commonly cause problems, but there are others out there that likewise cause problems and are sometimes harder to capture. Skin problem number one that can and does arise with using products that have fragrance, especially leave-on products, is something called allergic contact dermatitis. What the heck is this? It is a type of rash that is mediated by cells in your immune system called T cells. After you have exposed your skin to allergen, a specific allergen, and in this case, fragrance, um, your immune system can decide it doesn't like that ingredient anymore and mount a, a sensitivity to it and then you develop a rash anytime you come in contact with it. It's called allergic contact dermatitis. When it comes to personal care, products, cosmetics, fragrance is the number one cause of allergic contact dermatitis. Developing allergic contact dermatitis, so I mean you can develop it to any ingredient. Uh, out there. There are some ingredients that are super, super low risk, like hyaluronic acid, but no ingredient is, is allergy proof. And so don't be misled into thinking that if a product is free of fragrance, it's free of the risk of contact dermatitis. That's not the case, which overall is kind of why the, the basis of me advocating for you guys to just really keep your skincare routine minimal, to just minimize the risk that your skin will mount an immune response to, to one of the ingredients. But the issue with fragrance and allergic contact dermatitis, it goes a little bit deeper. Fragrance ingredients, they are co-sensitizing, meaning the presence of fragrance in a product can increase the risk that you will develop an allergy to other ingredients in the product. So that adds another element of risk. People will ask, well, what is the rate of contact dermatitis? Isn't it like super low? I've seen people on Instagram commenting that it's like only 5%, right? Like that's nothing. Mm, that's not completely accurate, you guys. One of the major issues in dermatology is that when it comes to assaying and measuring and testing for contact dermatitis, we do something called patch testing. What the heck is that? Well, we put ingredients on the skin that are that we think might be causing the person's rash, and we see if they develop a, a reaction just to the sites where we put the, the ingredients. And when we measure for fragrance, we, we don't have all 300 potential allergens at our disposal. It's understood in dermatology that we are not capturing true prevalence of contact dermatitis because of the way the test is and also because of the nature of access to dermatology. I mean, there are so many people who never, ever, ever get to see a dermatologist because they require referrals. I mean, you have to have an advanced case, right? I mean, it's just the nature of healthcare, unfortunately. Regardless of what country you live in or what your healthcare system is, this is, an, this is, this is the truth. I mean, not everybody gets in to see a dermatologist. This is an issue with a specialty as an access issue. Not only is it rare to see a dermatologist, 
dermatologist, but then you, you know, are you being referred to somebody who, who does patch testing? So we're really not capturing true, the true epidemiology of contact dermatitis. Because of limitations of how we acquire the data and the people that we actually end up seeing, it's really not possible to give a true risk of contact dermatitis. But from clinical experience, you know, for whatever that's worth to you all, but as dermatologists, from clinical experience, we are seeing increased, increased rates of contact dermatitis to fragrance. So it's definitely an issue. But no, not everyone's going to develop this, and it may actually be rare. We are in a compartment where we see the worst cases, and so maybe we're biased into thinking that it's more of a problem than it actually is. It'd be nice if we had true incidence data and true prevalence data, but we don't. The risk of allergic contact dermatitis to fragrance is much greater for products that are intended to be left on the skin as opposed to those that are rinsed off. So that's the, the main thing that I'm always pointing out to you guys. When you wanna know if like some $900 cream, like La Mer, the entire line is nothing but leave on fragrance with no salient benefit. So of course I'm gonna tell you guys not to bother with that. It's just gonna put you at risk for debt and contact dermatitis. So like that, that's an extreme example in the skincare market where it's just marketing, trying to get consumers to buy something that's nothing but glorified perfume. So that's the kind of thing that I'm always gonna point out to you guys, but it doesn't mean that I am fear mongering against fragrance. As a matter of fact, I have many patients who use the Neutrogena oil-free acne wash. This has 2% salicylic acid, a wonderful ingredient for controlling acne. I'm not gonna tell them to stop, and you know, chase down a fragrance-free version when that works just fine for them and it's not causing any problems for them. It's a wash-off product. Myself, personally, I use that all throughout my adolescence with no issue. So I really see where you guys are coming from where you're like, I don't get why she's always pointing out fragrance and like fear-mongering around fragrance. Uh, you know, there are a few facets of it. It's more risky in leave-on forms and some people are more at risk for developing allergies to it than others but anybody can develop an allergy to it and leave-on products are more risky and products that have multiple multiple fragrance ingredients in them are more risky. So the more fragrance ingredients, the more likely it is that something will, will be sensitizing. And if you do develop a, a contact dermatitis to fragrance, it actually can make your life quite difficult, which is another reason why I always point it out because once you develop contact dermatitis to an ingredient, you have to be super vigilant to avoid it, period. You know, this issue of a oh, wash off things are fine. Once you develop a true allergy to it, it's all off the table and you have to strictly avoid it. And it can be really challenging. Yeah, one fragrance is called Balsam of Peru and it's a mixed bag of different ingredients, many of which we still don't know, like, everything in balsam of peru but a lot of people develop allergy to it it can get so bad that if they eat foods that have ingredients that are in balsam of peru they develop this horrible rash all over their body they have to go on a balsam of peru free diet i mean it's extreme i agree this is an extreme case it's not going to happen to the majority of people out there um, but it does happen and so that's like at the extreme end of what can happen with contact dermatitis but it's worth pointing out and worth knowing about that. It's not, that fragrance is not without harm. But beyond allergic contact dermatitis, meaning your immune system being like done with you, there are other skin issues that can happen with fragrance outside of the immune system. One is a good old fashioned irritant contact dermatitis, meaning you put it on the skin and right away you get a rash, but it's not mediated by your immune system. It's just because the fragrance is so stinking irritating. That is not uncommon. Irritant contact dermatitis to fragrance is, is believed to be very common, but truthfully, we don't have epidemiologic data on it. It's just believed to be because many, 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 many people report sensitive skin, which is kind of vague, and they report symptoms with exposure to fragrance, and those symptoms are alleviated with removing fragrance from their skincare product. It's also not uncommon to develop contact urticaria to fragrance. What the heck is that? It's in the family of hives. Basically, you put products on your skin that have fragrance in them, and because many fragrance ingredients dilate the blood vessels, they trigger a lot of the same pathways that release histamine and cause hives, itching, redness, discomfort. Fragrance ingredients known to be associated with contact urticaria or this type of hives, which is not the same thing as allergic contact dermatitis. It's totally different. Um, the fragrance ingredients that are associated with this include uh, cinnamol and cinnamic alcohol, as well as menthol and balsam of Peru. All of these 
are vasodilators. They have ingredient, they are ingredients that cause the blood vessels to dilate and that can trigger hives in people. Piggybacking off of this issue of vasodilation is another problem that can happen with using fragrance. Because of the vasodilation aspect, people with diseases that are exacerbated by dilating the blood vessels in the skin can have a lot of issue with fragrance. So it's not just a sensitive skin thing. People with rosacea, they can get a precipitation of a flush of their rosacea and a flare of their disease using products that have fragrance because this is a vasodilatory effect. But also, people who have melasma, a disease of hyperpigmentation, one component of the pathophysiology of that disease is vasodilation. So any skincare product that has these vasodilators, aka fragrance, can exacerbate that disease. And it can be insidious in a way that the user has no, you know, has no concept of. It can be insidious, but it's definitely contributory. So for me as a dermatologist, I'm advising people who have eczema, melasma, rosacea, self-reported sensitive skin, any kind of contact derm, any kind of dermatitis on the face, I'm always advising them to switch to fragrance-free products because it is the most common culprit for these issues. I mentioned the melasma thing, but fragrance can also cause a pigmentary dermatitis. Yeah, you can develop hyperpigmentation from fragrance. This has been reported back in the 70s and it's still something that actually happens. You know, I'm always getting questions about what can be done about hyperpigmentation on the lips. I get a lot of questions about issues re related to hyperpigmentation. It's important to point out that fragrance could be a cause of that. Uh, Jasmine Absolute is a fragrance ingredient known to cause this, as is Ylang Ylang, Kanaga oil, I don't even know what the heck that is, uh, Hydroxy Citronellol, uh, Sandalwood oil, Geranile, which BT Doves is in everybody's BFF, Rosehip oil. <laughs> And it can also happen to geranium oil. The other issue that can happen with fragrance and skincare products is a photo reaction. Basically, fragrance plus ultraviolet light equals badness. There are two types of rashes are, that are related to this. There is a photoallergic, where basically the fragrance ingredient turns into an allergen when it's exposed to UV. This honestly is super, super rare. It was back in the 70s that it was initially an issue uh, with something called musk ambrette. And that ingredient actually was later banned in the EU. So nowadays it, it's, it's rare to come across that issue, but it does happen from time to time. The other type though of photo, photo reaction that can happen is a phototoxic reaction. This is basically when the fragrance ingredient plus UV turns into just a bad rash. This is most often seen with limes and citrus fruits. You can see it in people who maybe are having margaritas out by the pool and they develop a horrible rash from the limes. But uh, it can happen to uh, fragrance ingredients and plant derived botanic ingredients that are kind of akin to fragrance in personal care products. It's super rare, so you know I don't wanna overhype it. That is kind of fear-mongering, but it does happen. As a matter of fact, there was a recent report of a phototoxic rash developing to say yes to carrots, uh, say yes to carrots moisturizer. I think it was their SPF 15 moisturizer. Uh, the patient developed a phototoxic dermatitis to the carrot in that product. So it certainly can happen. Um, and it presented this kind of insidious hyperpigmentation on the forehead. The patient had been applying it um, as a sunscreen when they went out to run and they developed hyperpigmentation on the forehead due to the carrot in that product. So it certainly can happen. And in that, just as in that patient's case, it's insidious. Like it's not something that people put two and two together and be like, oh yeah, it's the fragrance in this. It's giving me this brown rash. So to all of those people who are always like, I use fragrance and it doesn't cause me any problems. Well, you know, four to five months later, if you develop a brown patch of hyperpigmentation on your forehead could have been that you know you just you, there's not going to be a cognitive aspect always is what i'm getting at but fragrance does not just cause problems with your skin it certainly can cause other health issues as well it's been reported to exacerbate headaches specifically migraines uh, if you've ever had a migraine it is like death i had one in my life and i hope i never have another one it also is associated with exacerbations of asthma. Asthma is a miserable disease, so if you have that, you know, you might have to be more careful about the fragrance that you come in contact with. 
It can cause respiratory symptoms and has been reported to cause mucositis, inflammation of the mucous membrane. So it's not without harm beyond just the skin issues. And a survey of the general US population back in 2003, I believe, showed that 17.5 to 20.5% of those surveyed reported breathing difficulty, headache, or other health problems when exposed to fragrance, namely in like air fresheners or deodorizers, probably candles. Beyond me just like pointing out who contact dermatitis, there are a lot of people who have serious health issues triggered by exposure to fragrance. So it's definitely extends beyond the skin. And a lot of the fragrance that we are exposed to indoors through deodorizers and scented candles and things like that actually emit volatile compounds that are primary pollutants like limonene, a um, terpene. And those primary pollutants can actually interact with ozone to create secondary pollutants like formaldehyde. Yeah, even so-called like green or organic or soy candles or candles that are all natural, they likewise emit the same compounds. Uh, you know, I always get questions like, why don't you use soy candles? They're safer. They're really, they're, there's no difference uh, between a, you know, expensive organic, um, candle and a you know cheapy one in terms of those compounds so yeah don't don't think that that 75 dollar candle that uh, gwyneth paltrow is hawking smells like what was it Yuck. yeah i think i'll stick to pumpkin spice anyways so while things like candles and whatnot are emitting compounds that are pollutants the hazards to human health i really can't no, nobody can address we don't have data on that unfortunately um, because again, manufacturers are not required to disclose that stuff. Um, so, you know, there's a huge gap in knowledge. So do I fear monger fragrance? I don't think I do. You know, I think I have a responsibility to you guys to point out potential risks of products. The greatest risk of using fragrance, in my opinion, is uh, in leave-on products that have fragrance, you can develop contact dermatitis to them, whether it be allergic contact dermatitis or an irritant contact dermatitis. Um, or if you have a skin problem like rosacea or melasma, uh, the vasodilation from things like cinnamic alcohol can worsen those diseases. Does everybody develop a problem to fragrance who uses it indefinitely? No. Uh, what proportion of people do versus don't? I can't tell you. We don't actually have good data on that because of the nature of the system and the way that we test for the disease. So, you know, I really can't answer that, give you a concrete answer. But in my compartment as a dermatologist, I do see a lot of problems related to the use of fragrance and personal care products. So I have a duty to you guys to point that out, especially when people are coming to me asking me in my comments and, and whatnot, like, what do you think of this cream and that cream and this cream and that cream? I mean, the market is saturated. It's saturated with so many products at a variety of price points, you know, claiming X, Y, and Z. And a lot of times when I just look at the ingredient list, it's like this is offering nothing but a ton of fragrance ingredients so this is unlikely to help people it's more likely to harm people plus it's super expensive which is harmful for your financial health so i'm going to point those things out in my videos always to you guys but it doesn't mean that like you know fragrance is necessarily like something that we have to strictly strictly avoid at all costs i, I feel like when i point it out some people are misled into thinking that like fragrance is bad, we must avoid. And that's like actually impossible to do. Um, and as a matter of fact, people who have fragrance allergy, I mean, ask them, it's nearly impossible to avoid it completely. It is everywhere. So I'm not advocating that. I mean, I, you know, like live and let live. And you know, if you wanna bathe in Jean Nate, go go ahead. But I am gonna point out the fact that there are some risks with it. I will say this though, you guys, because I get questions like, why is it that some dermatologists don't seem to care about fragrance and you like are always pointing it out and you know others are always pointing it out? Why is it that some people in the skincare industry don't seem to think it matters, whereas others do? And I'll tell you this straight up, we all have our biases, myself included. Major reason for that is that we all exist in compartments. In my compartment, I see a primarily issues related to using fragrance and personal care products. Because guess what? Nobody comes to the dermatologist when their skin is fine and they're having a great, you know, they don't have any skin issues. I'm only going to be seeing people who have skin problems. And in the case of personal care products, problems arising due to fragrance are common, common things that I see. 
you might find another dermatologist though out there because of the nature of their practice maybe they don't see a lot of cases of contact dermatitis to personal care products say for example a mohs surgeon a mohs surgeon is a type of dermatologist whose practice all day pretty much involves for the most part uh, cutting out skin cancers, cutting out skin cancers, making sure they got all the skin cancer out and then closing up uh, the hole from where the skin cancer is. The contact dermatitis that they're gonna see, is, those cases are gonna be few and far between and are probably more likely to be contact dermatitis cases to things like adhesive in the bandages that they're using and maybe the suture materials, things like that, not fragrance. Like it's not gonna be part of their everyday practice. So, you know, they might be a little bit more like, uh, yeah, uh, okay, fine, fragrance, whatever. But ask another dermatologist who maybe runs one of these specialty patch testing clinics or a dermatologist who manages severe cases of eczema and they're gonna be like, oh yeah, definitely fragrance, you know, try, try and avoid it. You know, we see a lot of problems with it. So we all operate, even in dermatology, it's not homogenous. It's not like we all think exactly the same and we are all biased by, you know, our by our patient population, like who we serve, like is it is it relevant to our patient population? In the case of some dermatologists, it might not be, and so they may like care less about it. Whereas for others, it is. And for me, as a dermatologist and as somebody on social media with a large platform of people, that's a large audience. So I have a responsibility to point it out based on the compartment that I exist in. But I do recognize that it's not gonna be an issue for the majority of people. So I don't want you to think that I'm fear mongering it or that like, you know, it's this thing like, it's not like cigarettes, you guys. It's not like cigarettes, you know, in terms of the risk. So yeah, we all have our own biases and we all exist in our own compartments. In my compartment, I do see a lot of issues with fragrance, but I do recognize that outside of my compartment, it's not a problem for a lot of people and they go about life just fine with no issue to it. There are a lot of products out there that are labeled fragrance free and it's becoming more and more of a thing. So I get it, like some people in the industry are probably frustrated with it because they see this happening with other things and you know, like people developing loyalties to certain claims. And I've got to tell you guys, like I don't feel like a sense of warm fuzziness in my heart when I see the term fragrance free on a product because you have to be really careful about claims that brands and, and products are making, they're not regulated at all. Like the last thing I wanna do is create a boom of more products out there that are specifically labeled fragrance-free. I know that fragrance-free, that terminology means nothing. Manufacturers, like I said, aren't required to disclose fragrance and some ingredients have other functions in a product so they can get away with putting fragrance in there and not really telling you about it. And that's not an uncommon practice. And you know, I, I like a lot of fragrance-free products, but I don't want you guys to be misled into thinking that the terminology fragrance-free indicates that it's truly free of fragrance. It doesn't. That term's not regulated whatsoever. And manufacturers can put ingredients in their products that are fragrance, but serve other purposes and get away with calling the product fragrance-free. Personally, I don't even know all of the ingredients and fragrance. I'm familiar with like those 26 that I mentioned. I'll list them down below in the description box. But what ends up happening is that as we have information on the rate of allergy to those 26, manufacturers start swooping in other fragrance ingredients that can still cause the same problems, but don't have you know, the data or the assay behind them. And so it just kind of masks the same problem over and over again. I understand fragrance has relaxing properties, you know, self acceptance, all sorts of things, all sorts of benefits can come from using fragrance, but these are the risks. And I think it's important that consumers be aware of the risks and and that way you are informed. If issues ha crop up with your skin, you know, maybe you aren't able to see a dermatologist and just understanding that fragrance could, could be a culprit might help some people out there at least avoid those common ingredients and, you know, help, help their skin issue. So I hope this video was helpful to you guys in clarifying kind of why I'm always pointing fragrance out. I don't consider myself a fear mongerer, a fear, mong fear mongering uh, against fragrance. I just, you know, a lot of people come to this channel uh, looking for product recommendations because they have skin problems going on. And this is the most common allergen in cosmetics. So I think it's important to point it out to people and point out all the ways that it can be causing skin issues so people are informed. But like, you know, if you wanna, 
you want to use Bath and Body Works hand sanitizers and creams and whatnot to each their own. Like I, I obviously enjoy fragrance, and it's not it's not like a personal vendetta or anything <laughs> um, or or whatnot. Beyond the Neutrogena Acne Wash though, I mean, there are a ton of products out there that I'm always recommending to patients to use and to leave on their skin that do have fragrance because they, they're over-the-counter medications that are approved for the treatment of their skin disease and you know that's, that's the pressing issue. Uh, a lot of antifungal creams, a lot of antifungal powders, you're gonna have fragrance in them. A lot of anti-dandruff shampoos, fragrance you know i'm going to recommend those to patients like it's not like i am a, a vigilant fragrance free dermatologist either i you know i i have a duty to help people get better for their specific skin disease patients that don't have contact dermatitis to fragrance but have foot fungus and you know other skin problems i'm going to tell them to use an over-the-counter product that has the active ingredient approved to treat those issues even if there is fragrance in there because the more pressing issue is clearing up their existing skin issue um, so yeah, I mean, I, it's not like I am like a fragrance free militant. I would not be able to do my job if I were, but I, it is important to be aware of the risks of fragrance and that it can cause problems. And I think for my audience at large, it's important to point it out and to educate you guys on that because a lot of you develop skin issues. And when people come to the dermatologist and they have a rash, say on the face, the neck, one of the first things that I will tell them is to avoid fragrance because it is the most common contact allergen in personal in, in cosmetic products. That is one of the first things we will tell people to avoid. But you know, then the next patient might have might have a foot rash that's fungus. We may tell them to buy an over-the-counter foot cream that has fragrance in it because it also has a good antifungal ingredient in it. But I do encourage my audience to think critically about the need for more products, especially expensive products that have no established beneficial outcomes and are just laden with a bunch of fragrance and are super expensive. But anyways, guys, I hope this video was helpful and clarifying kind of why I always point that out to you guys. Uh, and if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.